so uh while i don't have uh, a clip uh for the beginning of the video for the indiana pacers like i would other teams that does not mean that the indiana pacers don't have much to look forward to this uh upcoming season that actually one of the teams one of my sleeper teams for this season um not contenders not by any stretch of the imagination but i think a team that could compete in the east if they're able to make it into the playoffs whether you know that being the play in or outright finishing uh as um above a seventh seed uh which i'm not expecting but uh as far as the play in goes uh i think they can give any team a run for their money this team is very very talented in my opinion coming into the season um they didn't lose much in the off season they did lose doug mcdermott um to the san antonio spurs and they also lost aaron holiday additions that they made Drafted rookie Chris Duarte and also signed Tory Craig. Uh, Chris Duarte, who was the oldest player in the draft, doesn't surprise me that he was uh, drafted by the Indiana Pacers, considering the Pacers have new head coach Rick Carlisle returning to the Indiana Pacers uh, after almost 20 years. Uh, Rick Carlisle, who was the coach for my Dallas Mavericks for, uh, what, 13 years at this point? Well, well, was 13 years at one point. Um, <clears throat> how do I say Rick Carlisle isn't very fond of rookies? Uh, he doesn't really play rookies a lot unless you're just very exceptional. Um, he does prefer older players. He prefer veterans. Uh, in that case, I think Chris Duarte, who I don't think is going to get a lot of minutes, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he would prefer to draft the player who he feels can come in and add something to the team immediately. I'm not saying he was the only person available uh, for a role like that in the draft at that moment, but like I said, based on the uh, players that Rick Carlisle usually chooses to play and sit, it's not a surprise to me, um, but they have depth on this team, in my opinion, not the big, not the hugest depth, in uh, the East or West at all, but still having players like Malcolm Brogdon, TJ Warren, uh, Jeremy Lamb is still on the team, even though he has been uh, in trade talks, I believe. Uh, they still have DeMontis Sabonis, who is an all-star. Uh, they have Karis LeVert, who is a very, very, very good young player who could help be a corner piece for that team to build around alongside DeMontis Sabonis. They still have Miles Turner, who... Most people thought, myself included, they should separate Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis so DeMontis Sabonis can be more comfortable playing center. Uh, I guess they decided since they're bringing in a new coach, they want to continue to see if he has a, a, a different approach. These two bigs may be a part of the reason Rick Carlisle came there is because he wanted Miles Turner there alongside DeMontis Sabonis. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, Miles Turner is a great talent. Uh, very, very good defensive big who a lot of people, well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but some people had, you know, as a, a sleeper for defensive player of the year. Now, when I say sleeper, I'm not, I don't mean someone who realistically had a chance to win, just someone who was like, hey, I just want to throw this guy in the conversation for some respect, for some credit. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis, who was one of my favorite players in the league, uh, in my opinion, uh, a very underrated player in the league even though he is an all-star uh <clears throat> a playmaking big just like a Nikola Jokic obviously he's not on the level of a Nikola Jokic but he is lethal when it comes to playmaking he can stretch the floor a bit he can rebound extremely well uh I would like to see him more at center but his lack of defense is would probably be a big hole at center so uh I would love to see if the Indiana Pacers can find a way to make it work between Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis, and if they can unlock some kind of secret and success, uh, some kind of secret successful formula to this season and upcoming seasons. Like I said, this team has a lot of talent. They still have a Justin Holiday on this team. Uh, like I said, they added a Tory Craig, who was a pivotal piece uh, in a lot of winning teams like Denver. Uh, he was a decent he he played a decent role for the Milwaukee Bucks, but I believe he played a bigger role for the Phoenix Suns. Like I said, this team isn't the deepest 
in the conference or the league at all, but they can go about three players on their bench, uh, very talented players, two out of the three. Well, depending on what their starting lineup is, but two out of the three who could start on certain NBA teams. Uh, they also re-signed T.J. McConnell. So them losing an Aaron Holiday, who was really a backup point guard for this team, isn't going to hurt as much because they still have T.J. McConnell to back up Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon, who I feel is a fantastic player for this team. Now, with all that being said, I feel like the Indiana Pacers are a very good destination for a player like Ben Simmons. They have enough talent to where the 76ers, who seem like they're looking for a star or a superstar to uh, counteract the Ben Simmons trade to get in return for Ben Simmons, instead they will get guys like uh, maybe a Malcolm Brogdon, uh, uh, a Jeremy Lamb, a TJ Warren. That's all the 76ers really need is key role players and starters to fit around Joel Embiid. You still have Tobias Harris. You still have plenty of players on that team. You do not need an all-star, superstar player in return. And I feel like it'll benefit both teams. You can have Ben Simmons grow alongside of DeMontis Sabonis, uh, see what a Rick Carlisle can do with a player like Ben Simmons, uh, his playmaking and defensive acumen. Uh, Miles Turner, you still have Miles Turner. I'm pretty sure DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner would not be giving up in a Joel and uh, a trade for Ben Simmons going to a Sixers team with Joel and B that wouldn't make sense. So guys like Malcolm Brogdon, uh, TJ Warren, Jeremy Lamb, maybe some other players involved in Justin Holiday will be perfect to fit over in Philly. And Ben Simmons will be perfect for this team, a team that's not necessarily rebuilding, but they're in the middle of the pack. I've always said, and I believe I said it in a previous video, being in the middle of the pack is the worst place you want to be. It's not a good place to be. You're not good enough to uh, contend, and you're not bad enough to really rebuild in the draft. Now, maybe with the Ben Simmons, obviously I don't think the Pacers would be good enough to contend, but they'd be on track for that. How could they not be on track for that in the East with Ben Simmons and DeMontis Sabonis, two all-stars on this team? Granted, I don't see it happening. Uh, we've heard the teams that Ben Simmons is interested in. Uh, we've heard the kind of deals that the Sixers are interested in, and I don't think either of those narratives fit the Indiana Pacers. That's just my personal thoughts on it. I just wanted to throw that out there in this video. But Pacers fans, let me know what you think about that. Would you welcome Ben Simmons on the Indiana Pacers to start the, the forward trajectory of building around a guy like Ben Simmons and DeMontis Sabonis? Uh, I forgot about Karis LeVert. Either he will be involved in that trade or not. Uh, if I'm the Sixers, I want Karis LeVert back, Karis LeVert, Malcolm Brogdon, and, you know, maybe another player or some draft picks. But, uh, like I said, Pacers fans, let me know how you will feel about that. Uh, Sixers fans, how would you feel about a trade like that? If you're watching this, uh, let me know in the comment section down below, man. Make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell. So, you know, when your team video goes up and I'll holler at y'all tomorrow. Peace.